I'm afraid today's video may be cancelled due to unruly behaviour on set. Oi! Oi! Leave it! There's a lot of money to be made from walkers and hikers in the modern era, and because of that I feel that a lot of marketing has become so ridiculously over the top and flowery in its language that it's almost comical when talking about simple things, and nowhere do I feel it's reached more of a almost parody level than in the world of backpacks. So, let's talk about these things straight up and simply with no nonsense. I'm going to start with something that may seem incredibly dull and boring, but I think it's also very important, and that is the actual back of the backpack where it goes flush against your back. So you can see in brown we've got the Beer Geist 24-7, completely floppy with no framework, and then we've also got an Osprey Hike Light here with a very, very rigid back and all of that metal framework, and then a very tautly pulled material section. Why is this important? Not because of airflow and anti-sweating marketing stuff, but because by having something like a frame that keeps the bag away from being directly on your back slightly, it means if you've got a bag filled with irregular objects or butty boxes and bottles, they're not going to be poking directly into your back. Here's a little trick for you. I place a cutting board, but a magazine would work just as well in the laptop pocket of the beer gas bag, so that creates a barrier for stopping things poking into my back as well. Now, one of the downsides to the Osprey, which is probably my favourite backpack I've ever owned by miles, is that because it's got that metal frame, the frame itself is curved. So I don't feel comfortable putting my laptop in this backpack because whichever way you've got it, there's always a pressure point between the laptop being flat and the curved nature of the frame that it's going against. So that's something to consider. Anyway, let's look now briefly at a much bigger bag. This is a Eurohike Wilderness 55 and this is definitely where it becomes far more technical in many respects. So you can see, firstly, not only is this an absolutely giant bag, but there's a million pockets and straps that have all sorts of functions all over it. So it's got loads of small pockets and loads of small sections of storage, which are pretty self-explanatory. In fact, even the top of this bag that has the clips on it has a pocket both on the inside and the outside. So it's just storage central, absolutely ridiculous. For illustration purposes here, I have put a sleeping bag, a camping mat, and a two-person tent in the main storage compartment. That's a two-person, not even just a one-person tent, so that you can really get an idea of just how much a bag like this can hold, which of course is exactly what it's designed to do, so it's not something that you'd want to be carrying, let's say, to and from work or college, for example. This is for basically going up on proper long hikes, with a lot of equipment and possibly spending a few nights at a time out and about in the great outdoors. Now, what I want to point out here is something that you'll find in a lot of these bags, but not necessarily all of them. So all of that stuff has just come out of the main compartment, but there's this large bottom pocket section, which itself then has another section beneath that with a waterproof bag cover in. But why I'm bringing this to your attention is that after all that stuff came out of the main compartment, we can actually use this zip to remove, basically, an artificial bottom to the bag so that the top section now goes all the way from the top of the bag right through into that bottom expansion section. So we could have had an even longer tent in there, for example, or we could have put what we had in there but still have had inches and inches of free space on top of that for, I don't know, cutlery and basic cooking supplies, food, odds and ends. So yeah, like I say, I'm impressed with the sheer storage of a bag like this, but it's certainly not for everyday use. When it comes to the straps, you can really see that it's designed to take a lot of weight and try and distribute it evenly and with no real high pressure points or narrow segments of strap going against your skin. So you can see just how thick and padded all of the straps are. You can see how many options there are for adjustment and so on. So yeah, like I say, 
This would be overkill if you were just putting your laptop and your buddies for working. I want to use a bit of footage here from my in-depth Osprey Hike Light bag review to illustrate a few of the points not only about this bag but about that giant wilderness bag as well, especially when it comes to the straps and the buckles and how that works to distribute the weight of the backpack and just make it more comfortable to wear. So you can see on the Osprey here there's these yellow straps that go across the front of it which don't actually directly really go to your back or your shoulders and those are compression straps. So there's different styles and different ways these can work but the basic purpose is that if there's a lot of stuff in the backpack you can slacken them off so that there's more free open space in the bag. And if there's not much in the backpack, you can tighten them up so that it tightens the bag around the items and stops them roaming around and jostling about as you're walking. And obviously that concept's the same whether it's on a small backpack or a big backpack. So here you can see the bag is nice and simple on the inside. This has got that little pocket. In this case, it's for a hydration system as they insist on calling something that you can drink through a straw. But... Ultimately, if we look at the actual way this fits on my back, we'll get to what I really want to talk about. As I mentioned earlier, the part of this bag that goes against your back isn't actually the element with the storage space. It's this tightly pulled mesh, which is just far more comfortable for a start. But it also means that the straps are essentially attaching to a frame which is then sort of attached and built into the storage area. So that means you can have things like these straps here that go onto the main shoulder straps so that you can then pull the bag higher or lower and shift how much weight is pulling on what angle of the shoulder straps. When you then couple this with a sternum strap and a waist strap, it's remarkable that even with a small bag like this that you obviously can't put loads and loads of weight in, just a few cans of pop or bottles of water for example, that I've noticed and you can actually almost feel the weight shift around your body as you fiddle with these various straps. This is very similar to how the bigger wilderness bag works as well, although I'll say that one does definitely feel like it's got a more complicated framework in the back, whereas this is more of I suppose a bit of a skewed rectangle of metal with some mesh stretched over it. Now the long and short of this is that between all of these straps and the buckles to adjust the way the weight's held on them, you can basically lock this thing, especially the smaller bag with a lighter load, very solidly to your back so you can have very little movement and here's my dramatic slow motion example of it basically barely moving at all as I jump up and down. So if you've got a bag such as a Beer Ghost 24-7, which I absolutely love and have worn two different sizes of those bags for years on end and will continue to do so, then obviously let's say if there's a million of those bags sold, that's a million people wearing that same bag. Whereas if you've got a bag that's slightly more sort of tweakable, I suppose is a good way to word it, like these bags with all these straps and buckles and goodness knows what attached, it means that you could have a million of those sold, which instead of being one size fits all, are uh, one size fits most, and then is slightly tweaked to be a little bit more comfortable for each individual person's tastes. So in conclusion, if you're looking for a backpack to just go up to the hills and mountains for a day at a time, Something like the Osprey Hike Light is fantastic for the reasons that I've already extensively listed and I'll never shut up about how much I love this backpack. However, it's important not to step into the realm of snobbery and elitism because this is an expensive bag with a lot of features that won't really have much benefit to a lot of people. Say if you're only going in the mountains once every few months, it's probably not worth spending the money on a bag like this and you'll be absolutely fine with something like the Big House 24-7 bags that are a lot simpler and cheaper. And in fact, I myself have worn a Big House backpack up and down dozens upon dozens of mountains, walked thousands and ridden thousands of miles on my bike with those bags, so you're not going to find me telling you to go out and buy something really expensive if your day-to-day -day use is going to be pretty simple and straightforward and not needing some ultra comfortable backpack. A bag like this one will certainly be pleasant to be wearing if you're eight hours into a walk soaking wet and looking forward to getting back to the car in some warmth. 
But again, don't get too hung up on what's fancy or cool or fashionable or stylish at the moment. If you're looking for a bigger bag to go out for days at a time with a huge amount of weight on it, then as you've seen a quick look at the wilderness backpack that I've got, there's something I'll say here. Don't just look at a review and go, oh, that's a great one, he loves that bag or what have you. Go out and try these bags on because if you're doing serious big walking over all sorts of terrain and all sorts of weather conditions with a huge backpack with a lot of weight in it, you're going to want to make sure that that's as comfortable and as suitable for your body type as it can possibly be because there could be nothing worse in my mind than being waking up on day two of a walk with all sorts of rubbing and blisters over your back or your shoulders knowing that you've got another two days of wearing that same bag and grinding away at that same spot of skin if it's not quite set up right so yeah uh, my girlfriend's just come back home so I'm going to uh, go and speak to her now thank you so much for watching thank you very much for giving me this much of your time if you've made it this far if you're curious, check out my other videos for loads more from the great outdoors. Please do check out my short boat life books as well. And well, just find loads more outdoors stuff with the links in the description below. Thanks very much, friends. Until the next time, keep it bag worthy, keep it boat worthy, have a fantastic day. And of course, my friends, farewell.